Good morning. I had about 20 pages, but I'm going to... I've since revised it since we started. Uh, I'll be brief. Um, had an image. Thank you. A historian, Rudolfo Acuña, writes, Politicians, the media, and marketeers find it convenient to deal with the different U.S. Spanish-speaking people under one umbrella. They claim it is misleading because no Latino or Hispanic nationality exists, since no Latino state exists. So generalizing the term Latino slights the various national identities included under the umbrella. Latino is as much as of a concept as the word freedom and often as complex and misused. The word Latino originates back to the Latians, an Italic tribe that originated in the Italian peninsula and who spoke various European language that included but was not limited to early Vulgar Latin, circa 1000 BC. Its contemporary use to define individuals, groups that make up entire geographies, can be traced to European colonialism in the continent of the Americas and the Caribbean. This would include French-speaking Canada and Haiti. In 1831, Michel Chevalier, a French engineer, proposed during his time in Mexico that many parts of the Americas were populated by a Latin race, a statement made as a way of unifying Latin Europe, France, Italy, Spain, and other Romance language-based territories. The United States government adopted the term Latino in 1997 to, re to replace Hispanic, a term officially selected by then, but in 1970, by the U.S. President Richard Nixon's administration for the Census Bureau. Both terms are still used today to define Spanish-speaking people in the United States. Before 1970, the U.S. Census Bureau categorized anyone speaking Castilian Spanish as white. Author Lale Wolf describes the term Hispanic as cultures or countries that were once under Spanish rule, Mexico, Central America, and most South America, where Spanish was the primary language. My concern is that these definitions maintain a muted or invisible presence of African, Asian, and indigenous people who live in the present day Peru, Chile, Argentina, Bolivia, Guatemala, and many other countries in the American continent. Those whose race or languages may be Aymara, Guarani, Quechua. El Congreso de la República de Guatemala, published in 2007, Delay de Idiomas, an overview of the 21 Mayan languages currently used in Guatemala. There are various interpretations of the term Latino and what it is to be that, depending on geography, class, and race. These differences are not often interpreted properly in mainstream US media. Thus, diverse groups are usually lumped together as a monolithic entity during media reporting or large-scale political polling. I focused on the fundamental origins of these terms because their usage not only categorizes, but isolates while creating a minority majority of invisibility. U.S. popular culture evolved in the late 19th century, usually associated with lower working classes. Pop culture has since tended to visually represent all aspects of society, including race, class, gender, and ethnicity, in monochromatic tones. How we view, critique race and ethnicity without proper analysis can also be attributed to the contributions of popular culture's one-dimensional lens. A discourse with marginal representation may in time lead to a normalization of exclusion where our conversations are solely based on capital. Writer Susan Sontag once wrote, a capitalist society requires a, cultural based, a culture based on images. It needs to furnish vast amounts of entertainment in order to stimulate buying and aesthetizing the injuries of class, race, and sex. It is difficult to say if Latinos are the largest growing minority. In many instances, NPR, ABC, NBC, Fox, and CNN have described Latinos as a single monolithic entity, again. But then the black people have also been described the same way. But then black people have also been described the same way. As we, a majority so categorized by race and ethnicity, I'm sorry, are we a majority so categorized by race and ethnicity that black, brown, Asian, Indian, Andean, Spanish-speaking individuals 
are never in the same percentage simply because we don't define our presence exclusively by the language we use, but the cultures we are part of. This presentation alludes not on Latinos and Hispanics, but also on the rich wealth of syncretic cultures and their fluid existence in the continent of the Americas and the Caribbean. Thank you.